All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking about uh, real current events on this little podcast uh, and doing it in real time for real people just like you and just like me. And for those of you who wonder, dude, you're not in your lane right now, man. Get back in your lane. Um, It's my channel. It's my channel. I can do what I want. Uh, And if I want to talk about current events, I want to talk about how um, the rockers... The rock community reacted to the Trump indictment yesterday. Rockers react. Remember, um, you would see these articles when Roe v. Wade got overturned, for instance. Oh, rockers react to Roe v. Wade. Or uh, what was that uh, Bader Ginsburg lady there? Um, I should know this because, you know, you hear her name all the time, the Supreme Court Justice. Who, who passed away, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, RBG, you know, the down with RBG, sounds like it could be a rap song or something, right? So yeah, rockers reacted to her passing and they reacted to, um, you know, gun violence in different places. They didn't react as much to the Tennessee shooting because they shot up a Christian school in Little Christian kids died, so um, they didn't really react to that. I, I was looking for something. There were a few people that, of course, were calling for for gun control. The gun shot itself, and you know you have to confiscate guns so they'll they'll stop firing by themselves. Anyway, yesterday Donald Trump uh, went to New York City uh, to answer charges that were what like seven seven eight years old now. Uh, And the reason he had to go there is because the district attorney decided that um, Trump is not above the law. And it's funny how they they looked at this before and they didn't really see anything. There was no there there. But uh, this time, for some reason, way after the fact, uh, I guess there's something there now. It wasn't there before. so rockers, you know, you maybe like Ted Nugent, maybe Kid Rock had something to say. I didn't see what they said, I'm sure. Kid Rock, by the way, was shooting beer cans. <laughs> you have to Google that story because it, it's fantastic, by the way. Uh, and you know what? Uh, I like Budweiser, but I'm thinking I'm not going to be buying any Bud products anymore. I'm just, just not going to do it. It's an easy thing for me not to do. I mean, there's a lot of gluten in beer, and you shouldn't be drinking tons of beer because you'll never lose weight. It's not good for you. You can drink, uh, you know, adult beverages, but maybe choose a little more wisely, all right? So anyway, getting back to Trump and how uh, rockers were all over the Internet not reacting to it. Not one story this morning. Really, the biggest media spectacle in my lifetime other than, you know, the slow-rolling O.J. Simpson Bronco Chase, which, by the way, they had comparisons over on the uh, the Communist News Network, where they essentially had a left-right comparison between the OJ Chase and Trump's motorcade proceeding from you know Mar-a-Lago to the airport. And this is where we're at today. Um, well, this is great news for journalism or fake journalism, whatever you want to call it because they can cover this stuff. That's why I'm surprised that I didn't see at least one rocker uh, come out and say, well, no one is above the law. <laughs> they didn't react that way, though, when, you know, Hillary Clinton bleach did use, she bleach bitted her, her hard drive on her computer. Why would you put bleach bit on there if you've got nothing to hide? And then you've got this Hunter Biden laptop thing where they have all the information. And they declared that, what, Russian disinformation when it came out. There's nothing, there's nothing to see here. No, one algorithm can screw up the entire uh, election. One algorithm. And people were like, oh, well, we, we, if we had known this, we, we might have you know, changed our vote. We probably would have voted differently. Look, I'm not the biggest Donald Trump fan. There are bigger... Trump fans out there that are people that, you know, they worship Donald Trump, uh, they attend rallies, they think the rallies are doing a lot of good, by the way, and they're really not. They're just 
kind of like going to a football game. You hear a speech, and Trump gave a speech last night, and I was not impressed with the speech. In fact, I'm worried about him because he was breathing really weird. He was like, and then he'd say a bunch of things, and I, I looked over at my wife, and I said, what's up with that? I mean, I do this for a living every day, and I'm not, I'm not breathing like that when I talk. And she's like, well, he's not, he's not really taking a breath, and then he's, he's just gulping air. And I'm like, yeah, but that's weird because you can hear it. And it was going through his nose on top of it. I'm not sure what's going on there. I know yesterday must have been a really brutal day for a guy, what, 76 years old, going back and forth to New York and then dealing with uh, – you know, the press and uh, just the onslaught of media attention in general and uh, this DA who apparently, you know, has an agenda. I mean, even, (laughs) I'll do a little Trump here, Uh, the DA definitely has an agenda and everybody knows it, right? Everybody knows it. I mean, even the people who hate Donald Trump understand that this is not a good thing for the country. And that's why I was thinking, well, maybe a couple of voices from the rock and roll community uh, would come out and say, you know, I don't like Trump, but can we just beat him at the ballot box? You know, if you got better ideas, you should be able to beat him. But that's the problem. They don't have better ideas. And there are other candidates. I'm thinking for myself, um, I would rather have maybe Ron DeSantis. Okay, now I know there's downside to him. There's a downside to everybody because everybody essentially becomes part of the establishment as soon as they go to D.C. Trump probably a little bit less than every other president in my lifetime other than Ronald Reagan, who just turned the 1980s around, despite what D. Snyder says, right? It's just (laughs) <laughs> it's just a good decade if you lived through the 80s. And you know what? The 90s weren't that bad either. I was talking to a friend, and it's like Bill Clinton, right, for most of the 90s. And, you know, he worked with the Republicans, and they got stuff done, and it was relatively peaceful, and there wasn't, like, daily scandal like there is today. And the culture, yeah, the culture hadn't completely unraveled at that point. Uh, I mean, what you're seeing now... I mean, I don't even want to get into it in this video, but or audio, whatever I'm doing here. <sighs> it's just that the Trump situation, you would think there would be a few people out there who would just say something about this, you know, and go, look, we, we need to maybe reel this in. And there's a theory, there's a couple of theories. Uh, I did a video on my other channel with my good friend Charles, and we were talking about this, and he said, you know what this is? This is a way to get Trump more support, more sympathy from the people who support Trump. And he'll become the nominee, and then he'll get beat in the general election. Again, because there are groups, and this is the truth. My friend Jonesy was telling me this, and he's really astute political observer, and there are other people who I reach out to, who, by the way, are really on the inside Uh, when it comes to media and some of this more political stuff. And he said, yeah, he's probably not capable of winning a general election. And I think they just put in a really corrupt judge up in Wisconsin. So (laughs) if you want to challenge results of anything in that state, uh, which I think was one of the contested states, uh, you you ain't going to go anywhere. I mean, if they lock down the courts and the district attorneys and the attorney generals and, you know, certain political positions in these states, um, you know, it, it's over. It's kind of over. I, I would like to think it's not over, but you probably need somebody who can appeal to suburban college-educated women. Okay, you just do. I don't understand what it is about Donald Trump that ticks everybody off in that demographic so much, but yeah, it just is what it is, you know. And there are other groups of people who, who again, maybe want to vote for him again, but are kind of like, 
the circus is too much. We just want to chill out. But what happened yesterday, even Mitt Romney is upset. Even Mitt Romney. <laughs> Mittens, as we used to call him when I was in Massachusetts. We used to have a nickname for Mitt Romney. It was Mittens. Um, but yeah, it's, it's bad when you've got somebody who can't stand Donald Trump. And it's in its own, it, he's, he's in his own party, but does that really matter? No. He's, he's basically part of the establishment and uh, it, it's really sad because uh, the guy is, is pretty sharp and uh, people voted for him in 2012 when he ran for president. The point is, I don't know when the general population is going to see what's happening uh, in a way where something changes. And I, I don't, I don't understand when it came to the medical stuff. I, I'm still shocked at by just how naive people are and how trusting people are. And then the news media, which uh, for years ha has just reported in one direction, you know, it's like Harry Styles, one direction, get it? Um, <laughs> by the way, Harry Styles, uh, Steve Perry was talking about how great Harry Styles is. Yeah, he made this statement about, you know, 15 nights or something sold out in Los Angeles. And that's a big deal. It is. It is a big deal. I, I'm not really into Harry Styles, but I know there are people who like him. I mean, that's that's good. I'm glad people like him. Anyway, getting back to this uh, rockers react to the uh, Trump indictment. Um, no rockers, really, no rockers reacted because they don't see this as a problem. They don't see uh, tyranny and uh, totalitarianism and uh, rules uh, that get bent or broken for some people, and then they get hyper enforcement from another group of people. So it's it's just bizarre. It's bizarre. It's wrong. Again, and this coming from somebody who is more of a Rand Paul type person, uh, Thomas Massey type person. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. It It's really sad because Trump does appeal to a lot of good, decent, working class people, and they don't have a voice. It's, it's clear they don't. Who's their voice? I mean, Joe Biden is their voice. I mean, inflation and interest rates, all these things. Folks, whether you like Trump or not, these things weren't issues four years ago. They weren't. Prior to the thing-demic, and then even um, toward the end of uh, 2020, things started to turn around again. But especially prior to all of that, 2019 was a pretty good year. I mean, I could buy gas for like $1.97 per gallon, and that makes a big difference every single month, every single week. And, you know, prices were affordable at the grocery store and energy costs were reasonable insurance, which has skyrocketed where I live, partly due to the hurricane, but there are other issues that are driving that. And in general, what the banking industry is in trouble. And we've got this little war in Ukraine, which could have been ended like a year ago. But here we are, and they're talking about more of it. And uh, this stuff wasn't going on when Trump was the president, uh, and and that's true. You you cannot tell me otherwise because those are facts, and facts are stubborn things. So in any event, people, um, the rockers. Uh, I'm not expecting any reaction from anybody in the rock community because they don't give a crap. They, in fact, they're hoping that Trump goes to jail. And if Trump goes to jail, I, I really think, I mean, it's already the end. We're already nearing the end. But if Trump goes to jail, I mean, anybody who goes up against just a little bit, I mean, Trump could have done so much more. That's my complaint. He could have done more. He tried to capitulate here and there, and they didn't care. They, they don't care if Trump um, 
does one thing that they like, they they just hate the guy. And it's it's a real unnatural and unhealthy hatred of this man, who I think was a pretty good president. Reagan is still my favorite, but Trump was still a, a, a change. He was a break in all of the war and all of um, some of those things that have really, you know, made America not great. So we are not a great place right now. And um, that's my little podcast here.